Hello, my name is Jordan, and I graduated in 2012 with a degree in economics, and I still vividly remember a particular question on one of my exams that dealt with externalities. Uh, and in particular, it tripped me up because I wasn't fully prepared for some of the distinctions between the four different types of externalities that exist. Uh, so uh, as a quick refresher, uh, an externality is, is basically just an added cost or benefit to society as a whole, uh, that these costs and benefits are not taken into account by the individual buyers and sellers in a given market. So what are the four types? Well, we've got uh, negative externalities and positive externalities, um, such as negative externalities such as pollution and secondhand smoke from cigarettes, um, and positive externalities like the reduction in CO2 from growing an apple orchard, all these trees that are sucking up the CO2, and, and lawn beautification if your neighbors put out bird baths and, and the effect that it has on other people. Um, but the tricky part is when you get to uh, where these externalities take place because there's a distinction between the production and consumption. You've got negative externalities of production and negative externalities of consumption. And similarly, you have positive externalities of production and consumption. And where the externality happens makes a difference when you get to the graphical interpretation. So uh, we're going to take one example here. We'll start with the secondhand smoke from cigarettes. And we'll do the, the graph analysis with the supply and demand curves. And then we'll take a couple of key takeaways with us for the other three. And we'll just quickly go through the other three and see how it's uh, a little bit related uh, for the analysis. So let's let's jump over here a second. We've got uh, production, you know, negative externality of production. We've got the coal plants, pollution. We've got reducing CO2. And we've got the bird baths and cigarettes, the secondhand smoke, which is where we're going to focus for a minute here. Now... In general, we can think of the supply and demand curves as uh, marginal cost and marginal benefit. And when we're not talking about externalities, the marginal cost um, and marginal benefit to the private individuals is the same as the marginal cost and marginal benefit to society as a whole. But when we get to externalities, that's the distinction. Here we're talking about a negative externality of consumption. So because we're talking about consumption, there's an externality we know that either costs are going up or benefits are going down, but where is this effect occurring? So it's, it's cigarettes, secondhand smoke. We're not so much concerned with the production of cigarettes as we are with the consumption of them by, say, our neighbors. And uh, for those of us who don't want to smoke, having to handle the secondhand smoke is a real cost or a negative benefit. So what's going to happen is we want to make a distinction um, between uh, marginal benefits for the uh, private individuals and for society as a whole. In this case, we can think of the uh, marginal social costs as being the same as the marginal private costs. This is the supply curve is going to stay right where it's at for now. Uh, what's changing because of the externality is that the marginal private benefit is not the same as the marginal social benefit, which is going to look something like this, a little bit lower on the graph. And this, this distance lower is representing this, this negative externality. We're going down with this, this curve because uh, it's negative uh, instead of up. So we have a negative externality. It's pulling the benefits down. And it, we immediately start to notice a couple of things. So the free market had an equilibrium point for private buyers and sellers at about $10 million which is close to what it should be if we're talking about packs of cigarettes. In the United States, it's, it's more like 36 million a day. Uh, and so maybe this is a smaller country um, and at $6. However, when we're trying to look at the social benefits, and this is the, the marginal social benefit right here, uh, and that's why, because it's different from the marginal private benefit in this case, the difference is the, the externality. Um, we see that the the social benefits are less than the social costs. And that's a problem. You know, this is the externality and, and this is why there's a, a loss to society. What we really want to see is where the social costs meet the social benefits. And that's right over here at around 8 million. So let's draw this in here. 8 million packs would be socially optimal. This is the more efficient equilibrium that's not uh, being accomplished in the free market. Uh, and here's why, because at this point, 8 million, you still have uh, private individuals who want to purchase cigarettes looking at it from their own private uh, analysis and saying, hey, 
there's still benefits to be had. I, I'm benefiting more than the cost. I should be able to purchase more. Um, and, and so they do. Now, what can we do about it? Society, uh, the rest of us who aren't smokers, uh, aren't really a part of the market. So what can we do? Well, we have the tool of government that can come in and attempt to put those social costs, these added these negative social benefits, back onto the actual buyers of the cigarettes. And we do that in the form of increasing their costs, increasing their private costs by adding a tax. That's just one example of something the government could do. So if we add a tax in here, uh, say $2 at every level, um, you know, at every quantity, that's what's going to get us to this uh, this equilibrium point here. Now we're saying, hey, uh, if you want to buy cigarettes, you got to pay a two dollar tax. Well, now you're paying seven dollars, and the uh, the producers are only getting five dollars, and the difference, of course, is the tax. We still have consumer surplus up here, producer surplus down here. But what's exciting about this is it gets us to this equilibrium point now. And we're accustomed to thinking of a tax as having a deadweight loss. This triangle here would be the deadweight loss of the tax because of a decrease in, in production, decrease in uh, units sold. But, but that's the beauty of it. In this case, there's actually already uh, a negative or a deadweight loss occurring because we are over-consuming, because we're not taking into account some of the costs, namely the secondhand smoke. So... This is what's called an, a corrective tax. It's a corrective tax because it's fixing what otherwise was uh, a market failure, an externality. Now, notice what we did. We said consumption. This is an externality of consumption, so we're dealing with the demand curve. Uh, it's a negative externality, so the, the marginal social benefit curve is lower. And again, because it's negative, we can tax it. To, to try to correct it. Now, if it was positive, as we'll see in a minute, we're going to try to subsidize it. Um, but let's start by going up here and say, look, all right, we have another negative externality, but this time it's a negative, negative externality of production. So marginal uh, private benefit is going to equal the marginal social benefit in this case. That's what changed. We're no longer concerned about the demand curve, but there's a disparity between marginal private cost and marginal social cost, which is now going to be higher to the degree that there is pollution. And this is a little simpler to look at from the standpoint of a corrective tax, because that's what the corrective tax does, is it increases the marginal uh, private cost by that amount, the amount of the pollution. And we're going we're gonna to say, okay, if we assume the pollution adds $2 of cost, then we want to add a $2 tax. And now we see again how this tax uh, takes up the $2 uh, all along the way up to the $8 million mark. And so uh, when we're dealing with negative externality of production, we want to leave the demand curve alone because it's production that we're concerned with. It's the pollution by producing the coal, uh, the electricity. So let's continue on and let's look at another example of production. Again, over here, we're going to leave the demand curve alone. Uh, but it's the supply curve that has an externality. It's the production. But in this case, it's a positive externality. So we're going to decrease the costs. Uh, that's the benefit of having reduced CO2. Uh, but how do we accomplish that? Because uh, it's not being realized by the producer. Well, potentially we need to lower the costs by adding a subsidy. Now, essentially, we're, we're saying let's take the marginal private costs and try to get it down here to the marginal social cost. Uh, by offering them a $2 subsidy. So uh, it's, it's as simple as trying to match up these lines here and say, okay, fine, we're going to do the $2. Now this time the producer's getting 7 and the consumer's only got to pay 5 and the government is making up the difference. Last but not least, we want to look at uh, the bird baths. Now in this case, we are talking about uh, positive externality of consumption. So we're, we are dealing with the demand curve again, and in this case, it's a positive externality. So the, the, the marginal social benefit is increasing. This is our marginal social benefit. And uh, the marginal social cost is equal to the marginal, social, uh, marginal private cost. So that, that would stay the same until we try to correct it. And what we're gonna do there is something similar to what we did above. We're gonna say, all right, we want to offer a subsidy to decrease the costs to the producers. And essentially, we're subsidizing uh, the bird baths because 
our neighbors are going to get some benefit out of it again too. And so that way we can get from 10 million up to the 12 million. Um, the key here, as we've been saying, is when we're talking about consumption, we want to be dealing with the demand curve and, and looking at the disparity between private and social benefits. And when we're dealing with production, we want to look at the disparity between private and social costs.